Hello, my name is Bishop Muggenberg, and I would like to reflect with you on the gospel that we will read this Sunday, which is the second Sunday of Advent. Each year, the church introduces for us the person of John the Baptist as part of our Advent preparation. And so as we hear about John the Baptist preaching in the desert of Judea, the first thing that John announces is that we need to repent. Now that word repent is a very important message for all Christians always in their lives. But especially during this time of Advent, a time of preparation, repentance has a particularly important meaning for us. Now the word repent actually means to rethink, to change our mind, um, so as to adopt the mind of Christ. You see, when we take on the mind of Christ, then we're able to see the world and our lives from God's perspective. We're able then to know the will of God, and then we can do the will of God. Now, repentance is related to conversion, but slightly different from it. Conversion actually means to turn towards God. Um, it's the moment when we realize God's presence in our lives, God's love in our lives, God's mercy being shown in our lives. And conversion is the moment when we turn towards that, not only acknowledge it, but say yes to it and commit our lives to it. Now that's a very important experience to have, and hopefully that takes place actually multiple times in our lives as we continually turn towards the Lord and focus our lives on him. But after we have experienced conversion, then we face the challenge of living out that conversion, all right, of making all of the small changes and necessary, take the necessary steps that we need to so as to come close to God and conform our lives to the life of Christ himself. That process of making those changes is the process of repentance. So repentance necessarily flows from conversion. That's what John is calling the people to do. Prepare for Jesus by changing their lives, changing their minds, um, and actually conforming uh, their very existence to the life of Christ himself. Now, as John is preaching this message of repentance, um, John actually is dressed in some very unusual attire. We are specifically told that he wore a leather belt and he was dressed in a garment of camel's hair. Now, that description of John certainly would have caught the, the attention of people of his time because that is the exact same attire that the prophet Elijah um, wore during his ministry. And John knew that. So John is doing something to get people's attention to make people say, hey, wait a minute, this guy is Elijah who has come back to prepare the way of the Messiah. Now that tells us that John was not afraid to stand out from the crowd. He was not afraid to act differently in order to get people's attention so they could be prepared to meet Jesus. Now that has something to say to us. You know, each of us has an opportunity to share the message of Jesus with others. But sometimes we need to get people's attention in order for them to be curious about that message, to want to hear that message. Now, it may not be that we dress in camel's hair and you know act like a prophet from the Old Testament, but there are things that we can do that can get people's attention and draw their curiosity to um, our experience of faith. Maybe it's something as simple as wearing a religious emblem, or um, maybe if you're having a t-shirt on for the day, maybe the t-shirt has a message of the gospel or a message of faith on it. Something very simple by which our very attire, our very presence every day is communicating an invitation of faith. That's what John was doing by his attire. And I think that he's given to us as an example to help us encourage others to seek Jesus as well um, through our very um, appearance in life every day. Now, as John is baptizing the people, he sees the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming forward to be baptized as well. And John challenges them with two important um, points. The first thing is that John says, produce the good fruits of repentance. And what John is saying is that baptism is not just a religious ritual that we do and then we walk away and go live our separate lives. John is saying that baptism 
is a true religious commitment. And it's a commitment that we have to live out every day from then on by producing the good fruits of life in Christ. So John is challenging the Pharisees um, to understand that um, they, they have to bear witness to what they are saying in their faith commitment of baptism itself. Now today, I oftentimes use the expression that baptism is to the Christian life what a wedding is to a marriage. Namely, it begins a lifelong process, um, a lifelong journey that we pray will one day lead us into the very presence of God. But that only happens as we choose to conform our lives to Christ, to bear the good fruits of repentance, the good fruits of grace, the good fruits of baptism itself. So John is challenging the Pharisees to realize that that act of baptism is something that they're going to have to live out in very visible and uh, external ways in everything they say and do. Secondly, John challenges the Pharisees to not deceive themselves by claiming to be children of Abraham. Now, Jesus um, will also emphasize this in the gospel as we continue through uh, Matthew's gospel. But oftentimes, Jesus was very frustrated because he ran into people who just presumed that they had a privileged relationship with God simply based on the fact that they were members of the Jewish people or of a particular nation or whatever. And Jesus really challenged that false basis of faith. You know, the reality is that um, God expects every single one of us to make our own decision of faith and to live our own life of faith. We cannot ride on the coattails of other people's faith. So the Pharisees, um, the scribes, the Sadducees, those whom John was challenging, they perhaps had a tendency to presume that their heritage gave them privileged status in the eyes of God. And John is telling them that's simply not true. Sometimes we may even hear the expression that God has no grandchildren. We are children of God, but we can't ride on the coattails of other people's faith. What Abraham did is to his credit. And what we need to do in our own lives will be to our credit. We can't claim his credit. We need to merit our own uh, grace in the eyes of God um, by living our own faith um, and doing it as our own decision and not simply relying on other people's um, decisions of faith. And then John ends this passage with a very beautiful image. He says that one is coming after him who will baptize with fire. And then he says, I am not worthy to unfasten the strap of his sandal. Now that's an important image because in every household, there were various levels of slaves, household slaves who cared for different tasks, and they had a certain status among them. The lowest slave of any household is the slave who cared for the feet, namely the one who would untie the sandals. John is saying that when it comes to the presence of Jesus, that John is not worthy to be the lowest servant, the lowest slave in the household of the Lord. And John is therefore reminding us not just of the drastic difference and contrast between Jesus and him, but John is also reminding us all of what a tremendous honor it is to be invited to serve the Lord in whatever capacity we are. It's always an honor, never something that we have a right to, but something that we are invited to. So during this season of Advent, reflect on John the Baptist. Look at his call to repentance and what it might mean for your life. Look at his example of inviting and arousing curiosity in others to know Jesus and know more about Jesus through the very clothes that he was wearing. How can we do that during these four weeks of Advent? Think too of John's message of challenge, of the need to produce the good fruits of repentance and not simply rely on religious practices as a manifestation of our faith. In what ways do we simply presume that we have a privileged status in the eyes of God um, rather than making our own commitment of faith, our own decision of faith? And pray for the grace to accept whatever invitation Jesus offers you 
to serve the Lord, especially during these weeks of Advent. And if we do that, then John the Baptist will be a great image helping us prepare for the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will give us insight so that we might know how to follow the example of John the Baptist, how to heed his preaching and imitate his humility so that we too might prepare our world, the world of our hearts, the world of our families, the world of our offices to meet you. We ask this in your name, amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.